Hi, I've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday, August 26th, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, here's the Atlantic and Tropical Storm Erica continuing to make its approach toward the northern Lesser Antilles with Tropical Storm warnings out today, and uh, still struggling really here. You can see the low-level center is now exposed away from the deep convection to the southeast. As we talked about yesterday, Erica is decoupled and with the low-level circulation out here to the northwest, the mid-level circulation back here, and you can kind of see that little bit of a curling in the thunderstorms, indicating that mid-level center there, so they are not vertically stacked, and this is not good for a tropical storm. This usually means that they are struggling greatly, and Erica may even weaken as it moves through the islands here over the next day or two. But it's the recovery of Erica that is really the concern, because this is a very robust storm, uh, very large, and thus, unlike Danny, is likely to at least retain a circulation as it moves near Puerto Rico and the north coast of Hispaniola. And if it can reform, uh, the water here is much warmer, the air more unstable, may allow deep convection to fire and help Erica realign. That's what it takes is a great burst of persistent thunderstorms near the center to cause the system to stack up again. And once that happens, it will likely intensify if it can get to that point. But it is going to be a rough couple of days for the storm, hopefully bringing some beneficial rains to the islands along the way. Thankfully, not much of a wind threat at this point, but we're going to have to see what this land interaction does to the storm and exactly when it is able to recouple. This is a very complicated structure for Erica, and the models may still struggle with exactly when intensification could begin in the Bahamas. But the models do agree on one thing, and that is that Erica will likely intensify at some point as it begins moving northwest through the Bahamas. This was the most recent European run from this morning showing a hurricane east of Jacksonville at day six. And this is the GFS 18Z showing a hurricane in a similar position at the same valid time. Now, as has been the case really for many days, these models have not been consistent. This, for instance, is the first GFS run ever showing a hurricane of this strength at this position for Erica. And the European has been back and forth. Last night, it was a tropical storm into southern Florida. The run before that, there was nothing there. And then there was a hurricane out here on another run at this time. So really, no consistency from the models. And this means that there's very little confidence in the evolution of this storm track and the intensity because of Erica's very complicated structure today. And the reason the steering is so complicated is because if we look at the European Ensemble, valid at day six, that's the same time as the European has a storm here. This is where, you know, the storm would be rounding this ridge to the east of Florida, so it would be coming to the north here, and what's really going on is because this ridge is here, there's no trough that's easily sweeping it out to sea, and there is a route out to sea, and indeed both the GFS and the European show Erica avoiding the United States entirely in their most recent runs. Uh, the way out to sea is not as clear-cut as storms like uh, Earl in 2010 that had an easy trough that took it out to sea as did many storms that year. This ridge up here really makes a complicated weak steering currents underneath. The evolution of the little cutoff flow here and the short wave that may be coming under the ridge through the Great Lakes during that time have varied wildly from run to run and details like that are simply not forecast well by models or humans at the day five and six range. It's just very hard to know those details and until we do uh, the track is likely to keep changing with Erica, and until we see some really good consistency, uh, confidence will remain low. And right now, the Hurricane Center, of course only going out to five days, still has this on approach very close to the Florida coastline by Monday. And again, lots of uncertainty as to exactly when Erica will start intensifying. We're going to have to monitor its structure as it moves through this area here. This is going to be a very important part of Erica's life cycle during the next few days. So while the islands may enjoy some rain, uh, how it evolves and whether it can recouple itself uh, is going to play a big role in how big of a storm it could become later down the road. So we'll be keeping a very close eye on Erica. If you're living in the southeast United States, no need to worry greatly yet, but be aware there may be a hurricane strengthening uh, near the coast at some point later this week and into next week, and it might be worth thinking about whether you have a good hurricane plan just in case this comes your way. At this point, really hard to say who exactly could be affected, if anybody, because again, uh, the route out to sea is still on the table.
Switching gears quickly to the Pacific, we have a second threat to the United States, and believe it or not, it is Hawaii again. We had this storm out here, uh, Kilo, was originally thought to be a threat, is no longer a threat. It's moving off to the west over the next several days, but there's a new storm, Ignacio, to the southeast of Hawaii. This is reminiscent of Izel from last year, which came from the east-southeast into the Big Island. The difference is that this year the water is much warmer in this area east of Hawaii. So a storm like Ignacio taking a track like Izel could end up stronger than Izel was. Izel was not a hurricane at landfall. It's very possible that Ignacio could maintain hurricane intensity moving in this direction. Now the question, of course, is will it actually hit the Big Island or will it miss um, to the north or to the south? And this is also a complicated steering question like Erica. And uh, here's the GFS out to Monday or Sunday evening, rather. Here would be Ignacio. Here's the Hawaiian Islands. And the models have been all over the place deciding whether Ignacio goes south, goes north, or runs kind of into the Big Island and then weakens. And the reason for that is you notice this ridge at 500 millibars here due west of the storm due west of the Hawaiian Islands. And this is awkward because when you have the ridge here, storms don't go through ridges, they tend to go around them. And so this bubble high here could deflect the hurricane north or south and not really through it. So it's hard to say whether this can even reach the islands without having to de get deflected one way or the other. It's a very difficult forecast at this time. And like Erica, we cannot say for sure whether land could be affected, but it is a pattern that poses the risk, and Ignacio is currently pointed right at the Hawaiian chain. And this is the current NHC forecast, not quite in the Central Pacific Hurricane Center domain yet. After it crosses this line here, the agencies will switch, but the forecasting philosophy will likely be the same as it continues west-northwest and poses a threat in several days. Like Erica, a long-range threat. They may be threatening the United States at the same time, in fact, but both of them are very uncertain as to whether they will actually impact the coast. So we'll keep a close eye on both of these storms. There's Erica, there's Ignacio, and we will uh, continue to keep an eye on them. Uh, tune into the NHC for all current updates. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.